just stopping by the workshop quickly to pick up two titanium bars, nine millimeter and 15 millimeter. They are for the mount for the jet powered skateboard to put the jet engine onto the skateboard. I don't know which size I can get away with. I'm looking, I'm thinking 15 mil might be too big and nine mil might be too small, but that's kind of all that was available. I'm gonna take those home and sort of mess around, see if I can sort of fit them on somehow. I've also come to pick up these. A whole bunch of titanium hardware, screws, washers, nuts and bolts, all that sort of stuff. Because I need those for making this mount. So I need to sort of start sizing that and, and seeing what sizes and things I need to cut because I'm about to start designing for cutting pieces on the water jet cutter. So the reason I took home these bits of metal is because I have one more thing to figure out on the mount for the jet engine to go on the skateboard. And that thing is, right here you can see a couple of bolts coming through. And so what I want to do is put one of these square bars, either this larger one or the smaller one, and that is going to go right here like this. Probably not a good representation, but you should be able to see that. What I'm trying to figure out right now is can I get away with this smaller bar or will I have to use this bigger bar here, the 15 mil? The smaller one is nine mil. I don't think I'll be able to use the nine mil. The reason I say that is, I don't know if you can see it, but you know, these, these screws are quite big and I don't want to make these screws smaller. Like I could use smaller screws, I think. But these, these trucks are on this board. My whole body weight is going to be on the board, moving around, bombing along on the jet powered skateboard. And so I think I want fairly, fairly meaty bolts. I don't, this is what comes as standard. I'm sure they know what they're doing, so I'll trust them. I don't want to go smaller. So what I'm thinking now is, this stuff is, even though it's titanium, and compared to steel, stainless steel, anything like that, it's, it's light, it's really light and it's just as strong. I don't know if I want to go for a chunk of titanium when, you know, my typical design methodology, philosophy, I don't know if you'd, what you'd call it, but I always, I'm always stripping away what doesn't need to be there. If it, if it doesn't perform a function, or at least there for aesthetics, it gets cut out, it gets taken away, it gets ground off, whatever. And so I'm thinking, I'll show you what I'm thinking. <laughs> So those two red dots, that's where I would cut holes all the way through and that's where the two bolts on the trucks that I showed you a minute ago, that's where they would go through. But, and here's the difference, what I would then do is... If you now look on the top, you see that area I've marked in red there? I would cut that out entirely. So 70-80% of this bar would just get cut away and I am extremely confident it's more than strong enough. Once I do cut that away, there's really not much strain on it. It's just, the tricky part is that I don't have a CNC mill or vertical drill or anything like that. And so I have to water jet cut this. So I've got to figure out a way to clamp this, cut it, clamp, reclamp it again accurately to, to get where I need to cut it out. And yeah, I think it'll be tough, but not too bad. You know, I find it difficult to sort of get my thoughts across. Like, that's kind of as, as, as good as I can get just now. I think I'll do less of talking about what I'm gonna be doing and just do it. And you can watch it unfold and it'll become clearer then. I don't know if I need to, to do that because I genuinely don't know if it's coming across well. Like I'm trying, I'm trying my best to explain it, but it's tough. Like I've, I've never been that good at getting my thoughts in my head, certainly design wise, you know, across and out into the, into the big bad world. Right, very quickly, let's talk fuel tank or fuel tanks. Just had a major breakthrough, I think, literally in the last two minutes. Dad and I discussing stuff and he said, why don't you use that square water bottle you got from Kickstarter? 
this one here. Now, this is old and used. I use it all the time, so it's a bit beat up looking. So, I don't know how this comes through in video, if you think it looks cheap or whatnot, but in person, it feels very good. It's very clear. I mean, this is all scratched and beat up, but I would buy a new one. In fact, I wouldn't buy a new one. I would buy a new two or three. This holds 750 milliliters. I would need at least two of these. So something like one there and one there, or one, two, three, dare I say four. I think it would look good. And the reason for that is that the paraffin is like this, is it like a pinky? purpley colour, it's got a very nice look to it. You know, you'd see the fluid underneath the board and I, you know, I think, I think I can do it so that it looks pretty, pretty good. I'd have to modify it, I'd have to connect the tanks together, I'd have to have a tube coming out, I'd have to have a breather somehow so that the tank doesn't implode. But I think that's a good possibility rather than some carbon fibre thing that needs lined and, and all that. Like I think this is flexible and so it could flex with the board. But that is not the only idea. The other idea which, truthfully, when my dad first said it, I thought, that's just ridiculous. But then I thought about it and I thought, that's actually quite clever. You know when people go running, cross country running or go do marathons, and they have a very small bag on their back, and the bag is basically just a bag of water, like a nice, like it's like a, like a miniature hiking bag, and a hose comes out from the, from the back and they can, they can drink water fluid or whatever it is they drink when they're running. Well, a bag like that, not a rucksack, but a flexible bag that can, you know, can hold paraffin. And while trying to attach a bag to there wouldn't do very well, I mean, you'd have to use something like, you know, duct tape. Duct tape? Duct tape? Duct tape? You'd have to use tape to do it. Another way is that I can, I can make some sort of titanium frame and the bag could sit in the frame. That probably sounds a bit rough and ready and not very good, but in my mind, I've, I've kind of got it. I've got a, a good image of how it will turn out if, if I pursue that path. So lots of fuel tank progress there, whether it's the water bottle or the marathon sack on your back type thing. I was just thinking there about a video I did a day or two ago, a couple of days ago I think. In that video I was kind of complaining, kind of doing a bit of a whinge about something, I can't remember. It's something I don't want to do and try not to in everyday life and certainly not in videos and there's no reason not to just be positive all the time and never say anything negative. I try to do that in my everyday life. I'm not perfect, that's for sure, but I've got to hold myself accountable. And so to help keep myself accountable, I've got a quote for myself today. It's by Benjamin Franklin and he said, any fool can criticize, condemn and complain and most fools do. 